The Sleetery National Park is located in the northwestern corner of Latvia. The Baltic Sea washes against its shores on one side and the Gulf of Riga on the other. The beginnings of the National Park go back to 1923, when the western slope of the Blue Hills of Schlitere and the adjacent forest were designated as one of the first protected natural territories in Latvia, the Schlitere Nature Monument. In 1957, the territory was expanded and the Schlitere State Reserve was founded, but in the year 2000, this territory became the Schlitere National Park. A wonderful view opens from the Schlitere Lighthouse that stands on the slope of the Blue Hills, five kilometers from the shore. The lighthouse was built in 1849 by Baron von Ustensacken from Dundaga as a precaution against forest fires and as an orientating daylight marker for passing ships. First lit in 1961, the lighthouse had a working beacon until 1999 Located 100 meters above sea level, it was one of the highest lights in Latvia. The Sleetere Reserve, where no economic activity has taken place for almost 100 years, is located in the Blue Hills of Sleetere. Even after the great storms of the 1960s, the toppled trees were left to regenerate naturally. The slopes are covered with protective ravine forest of ash, maple and elm, now rare in Latvia. In the springtime, the slopes of the Blue Hills are covered with ramsons or wild garlic in one of the largest wild garlic stands in Latvia. The forest at the bottom of the slope serves as a sanctuary for Latvia's yew tree, as well as for the Baltic ivy. Both of these evergreens are found all over Central Europe, but the Sleater Air Reserve is the farthest they have spread to the north. Thanks to the shelter provided by the Blue Hills and to the mild and moist maritime climate, a variety of ferns and mosses grow here. The Blue Hills are also home to a number of rare invertebrates. Several species of snails and insects have only been found here. Limestone outcroppings can be seen on the slopes of the Schlitere Blue Hills, the banks of Kukschupa and in the Zartepe Ravine. The Zartepe stream flows from the Schlitere Blue Hills through the forest preserve to reach the 15 metre long Zartepe Ravine. Here the stream turns into a waterfall over ancient Devonian rocks. A completely different landscape opens up along the coast with a view of the cultural heritage of northern Kurland along the Sleetera treasures. The Baltic Sea coast from Sigrags to Kolka and down to Malmsils is dotted with old Liv fishing villages. The Livs are one of the seven Finno-Ugric peoples to have settled near the Baltic Sea, and they survived as a unified ethnic group well into the 20th century. During the first period of Latvian independence, from 1918 until the Second World War, these coastal villages were lively and active, both economically and culturally. A narrow-gauge railroad operated along the coast at the time when the village of Maziaba was the hub of Liv cultural life. In 1923, the most active Livs founded a cultural organization called the Livonian Union. With the support of their ethnic cousins, the Finns, Estonians and Hungarians, they built a Liv cultural center in Maziaba in 1939. The busy coastal life was interrupted by the Second World War and the ensuing Soviet era. The National Park territory became part of a tightly guarded Soviet western border zone. Coastal territories from Ventspils to Kolka were off limits and taken over by the military. Any movement of the locals was strictly controlled. The traditional livelihood of the coast, sea fishing, was forbidden in almost all of the villages and the population was forced to relocate to Ventspils, Kolka and Roya. Schools and stores along the coast were closed and the territory of northern Kurland became even more sparsely populated.
After Latvia regained its independence, the Liv Union resumed functioning. Every year since then, in the middle of the summer, Liv culture is celebrated in a widely popular festival in Mazirbe. Nowadays, many of the old fishermen's cottages along the shore have been remodeled into summer homes for city dwellers, but the local inhabitants give tourists the opportunity to learn some of the old skills. Andris Antmanis of Pitrugs lets his guests take part in every aspect of preparing fish. In Vaida, a few villages further on, it's possible to see the fascinating collection of Edgar's Hausmannis, a longtime forester and employee of the nature reserve. He is the proud owner of 550 antlers collected from the moose and deer that live in the local forest. What we saw in Edgar's House Manis's home was intriguing, so together with Helmut's Hoffmanis, the park's environmental inspector, we went to inspect Baju Bog, the place where Edgar's found most of his collection. Baju Bog is a coastal raised bog. In 1992, there was a large fire there and in the adjacent forest. Helmets told us that after the fire, the burned forest was left alone and no new trees were planted, as would have been done in cultivated forest lands. The swamp and the forest were left alone to renew themselves naturally. Towards Kolka, Baju Bog merges with a landscape that is unique in Europe. The narrow, old dunes are called Kangari, and the damp gullies between them are called Vigas. These were created within the various stages of the development of the Baltic Sea, as the glaciers that once covered this area receded. Between Kolka and Baju Bog, some 150 Kangari alternate with Vigas. Baju Bog, the Sleetery Reserve, and the so-called Swedish Woodland are places within the national park where human presence and activity are limited. Wolves and bobcats feel safe here. Latvia's largest mammal, the moose, roams freely, and beavers are free to build their complex dam systems. Every so often in these forests and marshes, untouched by human hands for decades, a plant, mushroom or invertebrate unknown in Latvia and even to the world is discovered. Baju Bog can only be visited in the autumn during cranberry season. Gathering cranberries is an important local tradition and does not harm the environment. Since the baby chicks of the indigenous birds have already hatched, and most plants and animals are preparing for winter. 
the rest of the national park is freely accessible to visitors at any time of the year. Every year, Sleetera National Park, together with natural scientists and local tourism companies, hold a variety of nature exploration events. Each spring and autumn, bird days are held with bird watching activities at Cape Colca. At the beginning of the summer, during hikers days, expeditions through the fields, forests and swamps are led by knowledgeable natural scientists. But during the warm nights at the height of summer, you can take part in the exciting insect night events by the Schlitterer Lighthouse. Cape Colca is the most visited spot in the national park attracting over 50,000 visitors annually. Cape Colca is located where the Baltic Sea and the Gulf of Riga meet. From here, a wide sandbank reaches several kilometers out into the sea. In 1884, a lighthouse was built on a man-made island at the farthest point of the sandbank. Originally, it was located about five kilometers from the shore, but over the past hundred years, the sea has gradually eaten away at the shore, shrinking it by two to three meters each year. The path of migratory birds traveling from the White Sea to the Baltic crosses Cape Colca. And during the spring migration period, tens and hundreds of thousands of birds fly over it each day. Go there in spring, and you will see almost all of the species of birds found in Latvia. Visitors to the Sleetery National Park can partake in many diverse adventures. The day we spent here allowed us to see only a few of the natural and cultural monuments in the area. There is still much more to see and do.